In this video, we are going to provide useful information about the spider, which can be known as one of the household insects. We suggest you stay with us until the end of this video. Almost all adult arachnids have eight legs, although the front pair of legs has evolved into a sensory function in some species, while in others the various appendages can be large enough to become additional pairs of legs. Most of the existing spiders live on land and some of them live in fresh water. Arachnids include more than 100,000 named species. Arachnids range in size from mites as small as 0.08 mm to the giant African scorpion, which may be 21 cm or more in length. In terms of appearance, arachnids vary from short-bodied mites, round-bodied wasps, and scorpions with curved tails to slender, sturdy, hairy tarantulas. Most arachnids are predators and do not have jaws, and except for a few exceptions, they pour digestive juices on their prey and suck the digested food. All adult spiders have eight legs, unlike adult insects, which all have six legs. Arachnids have two additional pairs of appendages adapted for feeding, defense, and sensory perception. The first pair, chelicerae, function in feeding and defense. The next pair of appendages, called patra or pedipalp, are adapted for feeding, locomotion or reproductive functions. In Solifugae, a type of tarantula, the palms are exactly like the feet, so that these animals appear to have ten legs. Larvae of ticks and capped spider mites, Ricanulae, have six legs. The fourth pair usually appears when they develop into nymphs or larvae. Ticks are variable and there are eight, six or even four-legged adults. Because they do not have antennae and wings, spiders are more distinguished from insects. Their body is organized into two parts, tagmata, which are called prosoma or cephalothorax and episthosoma or abdomen. The body of rachnids is divided into two parts, except in threshing spiders, tarantulas and mites, where the whole body is one piece. These two parts are cephalothorax and abdomen. Dorsal and lower body panels show more changes than ventral panels. Spiders have simple eyes. The abdominal part of the cephalothorax is covered with a strong cover called carapace and has six pairs of appendages. The ventral carapace is divided into rudimentary forms, but in many groups varying degrees of fusion between segments occur. This material is normally divided into pre- and post-ovid position, although this is only clearly visible in scorpions, and in some orders, such as the acari, the abdominal segments are completely fused. A telson is present in scorpions, schizometa, whip scorpions and palpigrati, and has evolved into a sting. Like all arthropods, arachnids have an exoskeleton as well as an internal structure of cartilage-like tissue called endocerinitis, to which certain muscle groups are attached. Endocernite is even calcified in some threshing spiders, apeliones. Spiders move in different ways, for example, some of them walk, run or jump. They mostly use muscle contraction using methods like hydraulic compression. Another adaptation, especially seen in larger types of arachnids, is the presence of elastic connective tissues. In most arachnids, hydraulic compression serves as the primary means of development in several of their hinged leg joints, namely the femur, patella and tibia, metatarsal joints, or second and third leg joints. Instead of blood, hemolymph is used to transport nutrients within the gel, and its secondary function is as a hydraulic fluid. As the hemolymph is compressed by the coiled tubules, it passes through channels in the organs causing compression and elongation. This movement is then counterbalanced by the flexor muscle to contract the leg joints as necessary. Due to the hydraulics used for expansion, the flexor muscle is able to be significantly larger than possible without being affected by size and weight. Measurable body volume change can occur during further leg compression, as the sinuses of the body contract to achieve pressure in certain legs. Apart from the natural walking of arachnids, in some types high pressure is used as a means of jumping, pushing the hind legs forward and allowing for more sudden movement. In larger arachnids, such as tarantulas and hairy desert spiders, another mechanism used for locomotion is elastic sclerites, hard muscles. These sclerites are semi-rigid connections between the segments of the foot that allow for potential energy storage and expenditure that can be used as a supplement or in conjunction with the hydraulics normally used in those joints to carry more weight. 
rapid and sudden movement when combined with specified flexor muscle in the joints as well as good control is achieved by reducing the sudden disruption of hemolymph flow. In joint compression, the stiffness of the sclerite increases significantly, indicating its support mechanism even outside of normal tension. An additional method used by some arachnids to improve locomotion is to secrete fluids that are affected by the hydrophobic effect of the pads on the ends of their legs that are in contact with the walking surface. Arachnids have been shown to be able to selectively use viscous fluid, meaning they can secrete the fluid under certain conditions. The use of fluids makes it better for standard displacement as well as sudden movements such as jumping and stretching by improving the friction force. There are features that are especially important for the terrestrial lifestyle of arachnids, such as breathing surfaces in the form of a trachea or changing gills to lungs and a series of internal vascular lamella that are used for gas exchange with air. While tracheae are often separate systems of tubes, similar to that of insects, rhizinoliates, scorpions, and some spiders have a sieve trachea in which several tubes arise from a small chamber connected by a spiral. This type of tracheal system almost certainly evolved from book lungs, suggesting that the porcupine trachea is not homologous to that of insects. Further adaptations to life on land are modified appendages for more efficient locomotion on land, internal fertilization, specialized sensory organs, and water conservation, enhanced by efficient excretory structures as well as a waxy layer covering the cuticle. The excretory glands of sea spiders include up to four pairs of coxal glands along the side of the prosoma and one or two pairs of malpighian tubules that drain into the intestine. Many arachnids have only one or the other type of excrement gland, although many have both. The primary nitrogenous waste material in arachnids is guanine. Depending on the type of respiration, arachnid blood varies in composition. Arachnids with efficient tracheal systems do not need to transport oxygen in the blood and may have less circulatory system. In scorpions and some spiders, the blood contains hemocyanin, a copper-based pigment that functions similarly to hemoglobin in vertebrates. The heart is located in the front part of the abdomen and may be cut into pieces. Some ticks have no heart at all. Most spiders are carnivorous and feed on partially decomposed bodies and other small animals. Only some arachnids feed on solid food particles and are therefore susceptible to internal parasites, although it is not uncommon for spiders to eat their own silk. Several groups secrete poison from specialized glands to kill prey or enemies, and several parasitic ticks are disease carriers. The alimentary canal begins with the mouth, which is located below the keel and leads to the pharynx, then to the esophagus, and from there to the sucking stomach, which has heavy muscles and serves to pump digested food into the midget, where enzymes they digest food in a special way. The absorptive surface of the midget is increased by a series of blind sacs, so see gastric. Feces collect in the hindgut and are discharged through the anus. Digestive juices secreted in the stomach of spiders and they use their legs, palps or pedipalps to spread the digestive juice on their prey. Digestive juice quickly turns the prey into a paste of food, which the spider sucks into the prebuccal cavity, which is located just in front of the mouth. Behind the mouth is a muscular, sclerotized pharynx that acts as a pump, sucking food through the mouth and into the esophagus and stomach. In some arachnids, the esophagus also acts as an additional pump. The stomach of arachnids is tubular and spread throughout the body with numerous diverticula. The stomach and its diverticula both absorb digestive enzymes and nutrients from food. Food is distributed throughout the body. Respiratory System in Arachnids Two types of respiratory organs are found in arachnids, lungs and trachea. Book lungs are in hardened pockets that are generally located in the lower abdomen. The diffusion of gases between the circulating hemolymph is in thin leaf-like structures, lamellas, that are stacked like the pages of a book inside a pocket, and the air is in the spaces between these thin structures. The tracheal system consists of a number of tubes that open to the outside by paired breathing pores, spirals, and are similar to insects. Flatulence occurs in small fluid-filled tubes that pass through the internal organs. Scorpions, tailless whip scorpions, and whip scorpions rely on book lungs. False scorpions, sun spiders, rhizinoliates, mites and hyenas only have trachea. Most spiders, both tiny whip scorpions and some very small mites, have only skin respiration. 
reproductive system of arachnids. There is considerable variation in the number and appearance of ovaries and testicles. In general, the ovaries are connected with the fallopian tubes and the testes have a differentiated vas deferens. The genit opening of both sexes is located on the underside of the second abdominal segment, although in some ticks it may be dorsal. Sperm is usually transferred to a special structure in the female's body called the spermatheca. Arachnids show the first pattern of classical courtship behavior, during which highly ritualistic gestures are involved. In true scorpions, during this ritualistic behavior, the male holds the female with his front claws and apparently pinches her at the joint near the base of the claw. The ensuing dance-like pattern apparently prompts the male to seek a suitable surface on which to deploy his spermatophore. After the spermatozoa is released, the male pulls the female on it and releases the female after the spermatophore passes to the genital opening. Many male spiders have difficulty approaching the female to deposit spermatozoa. The hunting behavior of most spiders is adjusted in such a way that it reacts to the slightest movement or vibration of the web, causing the spider to rush in and bite its prey as quickly as possible. Therefore, it is not surprising that male spiders have evolved highly detailed gestures and display patterns to communicate their identity. Many males are quite striking in color and provide more information about their identity. Some males only approach the female at night and vibrate her web in a very distinct way different from that resulting from the struggle of an entrapped animal.